Now, US President Joe Biden has endorsed the return, the effort to return to the moon that was initiated under his predecessor, Donald Trump. The Artemis program plans to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. Well, I'm very excited to say that joining me now is Chris Hadfield, former astronaut and commander of the International uh, Space Station. Oh, it's fantastic to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Um, just your re reaction in initially to, to this uh, plan, this plan to, to return to the moon. It's a joy to be talking with you, LaQuesa. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, delighted and relieved. I think it was absolutely the right decision to make. There's support uh, right through U.S. politics for uh, that program, and there's huge international support, including Canada, mm -hmm. uh, where I'm from. Uh, crews have been announced already to go to the moon, including a ca two Canadian astronauts are slated to go to the moon. So I'm really pleased to see this new administration in the United States uh, uh, not you know, drop this particular ball, but uh, but but support it and, and really kind of open up a future for a lot of different people all around the world. Yeah, 2024 is the date slated, hopefully, for Mission 3, Artemis 3. How long does it take to train? Because, I mean, you have first-hand experience. What's involved? Um, well, gosh, it's huge. The challenges on the crew and all of the engineers that are involved are enormous. But, you know, it's 2021 when, when Kennedy made his announcement, we'll be on the moon by the end of the decade. You know, here we are at the start of another decade and we're talking about not just, you know, trying to see if we could get there, but using all the latest technology and everything we've learned to actually get there and start to stay. And that that's a pretty exciting development. But the, the number of things the astronauts have to train for uh, the women and men that are in the different astronaut course. It's huge. But, you know, th there's time to do that. We have to invent a few things. There's a lot of private companies involved. It's a really different time, but I think it's a really exciting time. Oh, well, that's a little tease there, isn't it? We have to invent a few things. <laughs> what are you alluding to there? That sounds exciting. Oh, well, uh, the the uh, ability to stay on the surface of, of the moon, uh, the the technology you need in order to be able to extract water that exists. Uh, you know, we think there's 400 billion liters of water in the moon. How are we going to extract that from the super cold places it's in? How, you know, just the, all the little problems that we're going to have to solve. It's sort of like they had to face back in the Apollo program. So many problems to solve, but they did it then with much less capability. And now we can do it sort of to stay and use that to build to go further on to Mars eventually. And, and to me, it's a, a wonderful natural progression. I'm really pleased to see the recent support for it. Now, I know that you were inspired by Apollo 11, I believe uh, at around 10 years old. What do you make of the progress from when you saw that to where we are now? You know, it wasn't just me, but Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk were both hugely inspired by that. And they have created these two rocket companies that are going to be a big part of this. So to me, that's been a huge continuum of it is how people are inspired to then invent and organize and then do something that pushes the very edge of human capability. And and we've gotten so much further than when I was a kid watching Apollo 11. We could just barely do that. Apollo 13, they barely limped home and saved their lives. You know, we've learned so much. It's almost become normal. And we've been living on the space station for 20 years years as an international coordinated effort. And to me, that is the real groundwork, how we've been living and cooperating on station for how we're going to be living and cooperating and working on the moon. So, yeah, we, we've come a long way and, and we've still got a long way to go and we're in the thick of it. Um, I understand when we talk about a long way to go, I understand this is part of a, well, the first step to Mars. Um, I mean, how exciting is that? Well, we have three ships landing or, or going into orbit around Mars just in the next couple of weeks from uh, China, from the United Arab Emirates and from the United States. The American one is going to land right away and deploy a helicopter to go in the thin air of Mars and go and explore. Mars is the most Earth-like other location in our solar system. And there's even a reasonable uh, scientific expectation that there's a chance life may have developed on Mars as well. Mm. That will be a fascinating discovery when we know for sure, and we still don't, that, that we might be the only life or not be the only life in the universe. So, yeah, it, it's, it's really hard mm. and, and it's pushing everything. But we need that push. We've got serious problems to solve on Earth. We need that push and excitement that drives people to their limit so that then, uh, you know, they solve some of those complex problems and then it, it spreads all around the world.
Commander, we've heard a lot of talk about the possibilities of commercialising uh, resources on the moon. Do you think this is a first step to it? Well, there's a lot of people working internationally on just that. There are, there are international accords. There's, of course, the fundamental agreement we made in the United Nations back in the late 60s as to how we're going to do that. But I actually work with a foundation that's looking at that exact issue. What should property rights be on the moon? What, what should the necessity for using resources there as you weigh them against uh, the Earth Moon economic system? How do you put all that together? How, whose laws do you live on okay. on the moon or live under on the moon? We're, we're working on all of those things. It's, it's, and it helps to, de to develop our fundamental structure of society and law itself, which is sort of an interesting Thank side benefit of lunar exploration. Thank you very much indeed. Um, really uh, excited me. Commander Chris Hadfield, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now, the Canadian Act.